On a cold day in October at Silverstone, 240 drivers prepared themselves for the UK's largest annual motor race. Dating back to 1951, the Burkitt six-hour relay race is one of motorsport's longest running traditions, hosting nearly every type of car. In fact, if it had wheels, then it was here. Once again, Charles Graham entered Daytona Motorsports Radical, this time as part of Brakel Racing's two-team lineup. We've done this race twice before, third time. We came second in 2016. We came second in 2017. And so you can see where I'm going with that. I've teamed up with my buddy Wade Eastwood, who uh, won the race of remembrance with. He's very quick, he's starting the race. I'm out second, and then we've got Robert, who I don't know very well, a lovely guy, I just met him for the first time. He's at the back there, and then Ash, who again, I don't know, we've just teamed up for this race. So four cars in the race, six hours. Um, I'm keeping a real close eye on the weather forecast at the moment, because they're saying for my stint, it's gonna rain, which I'm not very happy about, but there we go. Both teams shared the same garage, side by side. Team manager James Brakel provided an overview of his race strategy. Uh, win. <laughs> You're running two teams. In one two team. teams, yeah, yeah. It's going to be hard work today for me. Um, the guys, they've got the instructions. They know what they're doing, so it'll just be um, the best team wins, basically. Seasoned Formula Three driver and stuntman Wade Eastwood put his car through its paces for the first time. There we are. The oil's warming up. It's above 50, even though it says it isn't. And uh, water's up, so ready to rock when you are, really. Yes, I'd like that. The second of the race, which is front row start. Um, they're just about to go out for a practice session. Uh, we've got four 25 minute sessions. Each car gets one session. Just a warm up this morning because it's uh, nice and chilly, so a warm up is needed. <laughs> After a few laps, Wade had some feedback okay, for the team. Again, I want to change the balance. Right, okay. Uh, what do you want to do? Well, it's just super loose to the rear. It made us do a tyre. You tires. want to shit tyres? It made us do shit tyres. I go to cops. I mean, I'm at the end of farm. Change the tires. Yeah, we'll change the tires. We'll change the tires. Go for The team made quick work of the tires, aided by the built-in hydraulic jacks, and Wade was back on track. Car's great. Yeah, just made a little wing change to the rear. It's a bit loose. It might be the temperature and me wanting too much of the car in this cold, cold day. But no, it's good. The track's lovely. It's a sunny day. Silverstone is cold, though. Really cold. Like fingertips are frostbite cold. So it's going to be fun. Really good fun. Following practice, drivers headed back to the pits while the cars were refueled. Yeah, got that. So when, um, whenever you need to get a message from me to Alan, we do hieroglyphics, and if he doesn't understand, then run over and whisper yeah. in his ear, okay? Yeah? Yeah. All good. Ahead of the final preparations, Charlie touches base with the other drivers. I've been doing radicals for about a year now. Um, did a year of track days with one, really enjoyed it. Thought I'd take it racing and uh, done bike sports this year. Been really so you've started bike sports in a radical this year? Yeah. So this is your car? Yeah. Have you done the Burkitt before? No, first time doing the Burkitt. Wow, yeah. you nervous? So it's a bit of an eye opener, yeah. but yeah, really enjoying it so, so far. Are you enjoying it? I am very much. Is it your first Burkitt? No, you it's did, not. It? No. You did no. last one last year? Yeah, I did the last one in the Mini. Yeah. This is my first time in a radical. Okay. The traffic is great, you know, uh, and we've just got to make carve our way through it. Yeah. And that's going to be great fun. It's zero hour. Final preparations and checks are completed. Drivers suited and booted, and all first in drivers line up on the grid ahead of the grueling six hour race. Wade will drive the first stint for the team, starting P2 in the grid, as the safety car pulls away to start the warming up.
everyone waits for the pulsator to drop the hammer. It was a great start for those at the sharp end as the group closed up down the straight. Wade kept it on the outside and moved into first place. So far we're up into uh, P1, good start, three laps done. Uh, we'll be lapping traffic within the next lap and a half I'd imagine. Um, build a gap to the cars behind hopefully, that's the plan. As Wade tried to open up a gap, the team closed one in the garage. With neither team giving an inch, all they could do now was wait. If it's taking the car for like five minutes, yeah. we might be able to leave them out for another 20 on top of that. Okay? It wasn't long before Wade was locked in a battle with the sister team. The backmarkers played their part to keep things interesting. garage, Charlie waited anxiously. It was time for Charlie's stint. After over an hour, Wade pitted for the first relay, while the second team inherited the lead. With an over-eager right foot and cold tyres, Charlie made a dramatic start. He quickly settled down and went in chase of the leaders. Rob slotted into place as Wade reflected on his stint. That was really amazing, yeah, just, I just love passing cars, you know. There's so much traffic, like so much traffic, and most of the drivers are fine, but I don't think I've blinked for the last hour and 20 minutes. It's just, just so many great cars. We had safety car, a good restart after the safety car, and then just traffic. I got turned in on one of the red BMWs, hit me, I let the guy through in front, and then just turned in on me, hit the side part, I had a vibration, so. Uh, I was going to, I tapped my helmet to come in, but then after two laps it, I got it cleared. And uh, so I just stayed out and then had a good dice with that other radical. Uh, he managed to gain on me, passed me, I passed him back, he passed me back. Um, and then I passed him and, and kept the lead and made a gap. But um, I sort of just relaxed into a rhythm, trying to keep a, an easy pace, save the tyres, it's a long race. So when he came after me I had to switch back on and it was great. That was great dice with him, yeah, I enjoyed it. Meanwhile, Charlie had closed the gap with the leaders in his sights. It doesn't get much closer than this. Following his flamboyant start, the team had an update for Charlie. When Charlie left the pit lane, he's quite excited. He put his foot down a bit too much, spun the back end out. Uh, we've just had race control, I believe it was, uh, talk to James, the team manager. He's just come to me to say, relay this information to Charlie. You're on your final warning. Don't make any more mistakes. Otherwise, we are excluded from the meeting. Put that car on wet. Yeah, but don't change the setup. Just drop the wheels and have it ready. We're going to send you out on dry tyres in 20 minutes, unless it starts raining, and then you just stay out. And basically, even if it starts raining, stay out until you think that it's fucking dangerous. And then come in. We're currently in P1. Uh, 
we're coming up to lap P4. Um, our driver's got driver's got 14 minutes left on his stint. A little bit of drizzle in the air. It's just confidence, right? We think it should be all fine on drives, but we got a car ready on wets and we got a car ready on drives. So we're doing just double guessing the weather. Whilst out on the circuit, Charlie faced a couple of issues during setup. The Daytona Radical developed a problem with the cooling system, which had resulted in the crew boss James Brakel having a lengthy trip to A&E for burns sustained whilst working on the car. Charlie had to manage the car's temperature carefully during the race. After overtaking Team 3's Red Radical, going into Stowe, the coolant temperature overheat light came on, as you can see here. Therefore, Charlie had to short shift, which meant driving a little slower to prevent the car from overheating. It had started to rain heavily and the car was running on slips. At the same time, Charlie was trying to reel in and put a lap over the third place Seika for good measure. However, whilst the Radical was gaining in the corners, it was losing down the straight because of the Seika's significant horsepower advantage. Eventually though, Charlie was able to catch up and put a valuable lap over third place. Charlie had put in an impressive stint, taking the lead and pulling out a sizeable gap over second place before heading to the pits. With the baton safely handed over to Rob, it was his turn to take the fight to the leaders. We just sent our, our third driver out on wets, as you can tell, it started raining. Uh, we probably pitted one lap too late to get optimum use of the wets, but I believe we're still P1. Uh, we're on a wet setup and we're on a wet track. Hopefully it all goes well. Back in the garage, Charlie reflected on his performance. I really enjoyed it. After a little bit of a mishap in the pit lane, where I came out with really cold tyres, almost spun it in the pit lane, went out while we were doing the driver change, we dropped to second. I think I overtook the leaders on lap two or three while I was out there. About halfway through my stint started drizzling, so it was getting really slippery. Then it started chucking it down. Uh, DJ was on the radio and he was telling me that second and third were about five seconds behind and then second seconds behind respectively. But as soon as it got wet, I managed to tiptoe away from them, which was great. So brought it back in first place with a 50 second lead. I had messages from people all over the place, they're all watching on YouTube, which is nice. So there we go, fame at last. Ash kept himself warm while the rain became heavier. Rob had pushed as long as he could, so it was time to switch. Ash headed out as number two, while Wade was in desperate need of a number one. As Wade got strapped back in, there had been some developments on the track. One of the marshals came over and took the team manager upstairs. So I doubt he was going to compliment us on our driving styles. <laughs> we got a 30 second stop go penalty for undertaking, overtaking and the yellows. So I'm just going to go to the penalty box now, time it. Rob served his penalty. It seemed like an age. The team agreed to let him complete one more lap before handing over to Wade. Wade was pushed into position while some final adjustments were made to his car. With the relay completed, Wade headed out on the second and final stint with a lot of ground to make up. We're about an hour from the end of the race. We're in third. We're a lap down on the SEAT team, and we're 20 seconds down on these guys. The next car to go out for them is a PR6. It won't be quick in the wet. If the SEAT team have got to do another drive change, we're in with a chance. The Radical was a handful in these conditions, while the Coopers enjoyed plenty of grip. 
Charlie followed the live stream from his car. Okay, here we go. This wave is catching the fear. And this will be to unlap us. Get us on the lead lap. And we've still got an hour to maybe do it. Wade put his wet tyres through their paces and pushed to the max. His sheer relentless pace had paid off and he was in sniffing distance of the leader. Having now unlapped himself, he had a whole lap to make up to try and do it again. The team were ever optimistic. 25 minutes to go, minute and a half to make up. We might have to hope for problems for the other car, but um, we're going to do our best. We get some, we get some good laps, some clean traffic. It's okay. possible. But Wade had pushed beyond the limits of adhesion, having mm. lapped a Porsche. Mm -hmm. He focused, got his head down, and made the pass again. The conditions were the same for everyone, but this time it was the sister team that came unstuck. Wade snuck past for second position. Then came another spanner in the works. No one knew how long the safety car would be out for, and despite the gap closing to the leader, Wade was running out of laps. Once the safety car was in, Wade was soon back up to racing speeds as the guys anxiously timed the gap. Ten seconds, two laps. Ten fingers, seconds. keep your fingers. Oh. We're going nine seconds faster a lap. We've got ten seconds to get, and we've got two laps to go. But we got traffic, so you know you never know. With the rainfall becoming lighter, track conditions marginally improved, although it didn't look like it from where Wade was sitting. It was the final lap, and Wade had clawed his way to the back of the leader, but only a handful of corners to try and make a challenge. Sadly, there weren't enough laps left but it couldn't have been much closer. That's what, less than a second on the line after six hours? Got it. Oh, oh, Hello. Second again. <laughs> one more, one more corner. One more lap. What a show. Oh well. It was a valiant effort from the whole team and they paid their tributes That's to Wayne. Lost on the time. Mate, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> well done, well done. Thank you. And to the victor, the spoils. Wow, what a day, yeah? What a great day. So we have to come back again next year now, go for a first again.